Hello Oval Files! This is a Technique Tuesday video and today we're talking about five practice techniques that will help you improve your technical facility on the instrument. These are useful for any instrumentalist, so even if you don't play the oboe, these will be useful for you! Let's get into it! Today we're going to be examining this etude that is a region audition etude for some schools in Texas. And I'm going to be using this etude to discuss how to practice technique and how to improve fast playing. A lot of times the most obvious parts of fast playing are the tonguing and the fingers and the end result can be very flashy but the practicing is very specific and here are some things that can help you along the way. Tip number one, isolate a small passage to work on. The first thing you want to do when tackling fast playing is to isolate sections that you're going to practice. So never go through the etude from beginning to end. I usually allow myself to do that once per practice session, and I like to do it either at the beginning to diagnose problems, or at the end to just have a satisfying end of a practice session. But playing it from beginning to end is not a good way to practice. Instead, identify and isolate small sections like one measure or even one beat that is giving you issue. For example, the eighth measure of this etude is a little bit tricky because there's a skip where before there was a scalar pattern. So, I might just isolate that measure and play it until it is very much under my hands and in my mind. And when that feels comfortable, I might either speed it up or move on to another section. Tip number two is to slow way down. The second technique is to slow everything way down. You may have noticed when I did the previous example, I was using a metronome, and the metronome should be your best friend. There's all kinds of metronomes out there. Find one that is easy to keep track of because you want to pull it out whenever you're practicing, whenever possible. And when you're playing with the metronome, make sure that you're following it exactly, really lining up with the click, and starting at a way slower tempo so that you can be successful in repetitions. Good technique is built on successful repetitions no matter what tempo they are, so go ahead and use the shortcut of slowing it down. Slow practice is the shortcut. For example, the goal for this etude is to have the tempo up around 90 to 100, so I might start the practice around 50 or even 40 to make sure that every note is in the correct place with the correct dynamic, articulation, and all the details at the slow tempo, so when I speed it up, they're already baked in. You'll lose some of the details as you increase the speed, but the more detailed playing that you do when it's slow, the more that will be left when you play it fast. Tip number three is to change the rhythm of the passage. Now, trick number three is a personal favorite of mine, and that is to vary the rhythm. Now this works the best on runs that are scale, well they don't have to be scalar, on runs that are made up of all 16th notes in duple meter. So I'll demonstrate here. Let's look at measure, let's look at measure 16 and I'll practice it a bunch of variations on the rhythm. The first one that I'll do is long, short, long, keeping all of the correct articulation and expressive markings in the music as I progress. Then, I'll do short, long, short. And then, I'll do holding the first note and every group of four. Then, 
then holding the second note. Then holding the third note. Remember, we're keeping the articulation the same. Can you predict what the next pattern would be? I hope so, because if you play the oboe, you're really good at thinking. We're going to hold the fourth note next. And then finally, play it as written, straight. It's shocking how quickly you can get control over your fingers when you try this variation exercise. Keep in mind that I was going slow so that whenever I have it organized, I can then bump up the tempo and it stays clean. Tip number four is to change the articulation of the passage. Yes. The next tip is tip number four, and that is to do a similar thing, but varying the articulation. Again, let's look at measure 16. We want to keep now the expressive markings the same, except for the articulation. So it'll sound like this. So first we'll do all slurred, everything slurred. Then we'll do everything tongued. Then slur to tongue to. Then tongue to slur to. Then tongue one, slur to tongue one. Then my personal favorites, the hook. and the reverse hook. After doing these variations a couple times, you'll quickly start to memorize the measure, and that'll put it in your hands and in your mind even more profoundly, allowing you to speed up the tempo without losing control or losing track where you are with your eyes. The next trick is to know your scales. The more comfortable you are with your scales, the more you'll be able to recognize the patterns in the music. So. Practice your scales, not only from tonic to tonic, but from the whole range of the oboe, so your lowest note to the highest note, and that might sound like this. This piece is mostly in D minor, so I'll do my D minor harmonic scale, starting on B natural at the bottom, going all the way to high F, and then ending on B flat at the bottom. Of course, you can do articulation variations and rhythmic variations on the scale as well to get it in your hands. When you know your scales, sight reading is a lot easier and learning technical passages is a lot easier. Now I know I said there were five tips and tricks, but there's actually a bonus one and that's six and we've kind of already been talking about it, and that is to memorize as you practice. So even if you're not going to play for memory, you can memorize one measure for that next 30 minute practice session. And even if you don't have it memorized for the future, you'll be able to recall it a little bit easier each consecutive practice session. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're playing the oboe or any other instrument, don't forget to subscribe below for more Technique Tuesdays. And of course, hit the like button so that the YouTube algorithm shows this video to more people and it really helps the channel out. Good luck out there. And of course, when in doubt, play beautifully.